All right, guys, on today's episode, we're going to be covering the in-cab portion of our exam. Before we begin this exam, we're going to ensure that both of our wheels are chalked. Get down, have a quick look at your wheel chalks and confirm that both of your wheels are chalked. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be getting into our tractor, getting into the cab. We get inside of the cab and we're going to ensure that our vehicle is in neutral and both of our brakes are applied. And then we're going to tell our examiner that our vehicle is safe and secure. So we're going to begin by looking at our instrument cluster. Now before we begin this, we're going to turn our tractor into the on position. Turning it on, we're going to notice that we have a few warning lights that are displayed. We're going to let our examiner know I have a few warning lights that are displayed. I'm going to turn my tractor to the on and start position. Turn your tractor on and put it into the start position. You may want to adjust your steering wheel so that you can properly see all of the gauges. The very first thing that you're going to look at is all of your gauges. Your tractor may be different, but they all pretty much do the exactly same job. You're going to look at your turbo gauge or your turbo PSI gauge. You're going to let them know that your turbo gauge is working correctly and you can show him on the road. The next thing you're going to look at is your def gauge. Your def gauge it has enough def diesel exhaust fluid to complete this road test. Right underneath it is your tachometer. Your tachometer responds as you depress the throttle pedal. You have underneath that your coolant temperature. Coolant temperature is working correctly. You have your oil PSI or your oil pressure. Oil pressure is working correctly. You've got your fuel gauge. My fuel gauge is reading correctly and I have enough fuel to complete this road test. The next thing that we have is our service brake PSI. Depress your service brake. My service brake responds as I depress my, ser my service brake. The next thing that you have underneath that is your speedometer. My speedometer works correctly. I can show you that on the road. Right underneath that is your primary and your secondary um, air tanks. They are reading at 120 PSI, which is good, between 80 to 145 PSI. So the next thing that we want to go over is our steering wheel. Have a look at the steering wheel, feel it all the way through. Our steering wheel has no cracks or any damages. Our steering wheel has no free play or my free play is within the prescribed limit. The next thing that you want to do is turn your wheels to the left and inspect that your wheels are turning to the left. Turn it to the right and again confirm by either looking in the curbside mirror or hopping out and confirming that my wheels are turning and responding to the right whichever way they may go. The next thing that you're going to inspect is you're going to make sure that your steering wheel is attached properly to the dashboard. My steering wheel, pull on it, tug on it, is attached properly to the dashboard. As you come down, you're going to depress the horn, the city horn. Press the city horn, my city horn is working correctly. My highway horn, I can demonstrate that as we get onto the highway. After the steering wheel is complete, you want to go over to your windows. My driver's side window, no cracks, no damages my windshield give it a little push no crack no damages my passenger side window no crack no damages and my rear glass no crack no damages all of my windows are tight and secure and, and secured to the tractor the next thing that we're going to go over are our side view mirrors and all of our uh, accessory mirrors my driver side mirror no crack no damages it's clean and clear my hood mirrors, driver side and my passenger side hood mirror, clean and clear, no cracks, no damages. And then my passenger side mirrors, no cracks, no damages. My curbside mirror, no crack, no damages. They're clean and clear. All of my windows and all of my mirrors 
are clean and clear and provide me with a clear view of the road. My mirrors are all adjusted for me to have a clear view of the road. Next thing that we're going to go over are our windshield wipers. My windshield wipers are mounted securely to the tractor frame or the tractor body by the help of the wiper arms. My windshield wiper blades, no cracks, no damages. Now you're going to go over and find your wiper stock or your wiper button. Put it in the on position, just a quick forward, push it just forward. My wipers are working in the on or the auto position. Now pull up on the stock. My water and my wiper are working. Put it in the very first location and pull your water. My wipers are working in the number one setting. Put it once one step down. My wipers and my water is working in the number two setting. Put it one step down. My wipers and, and water is working in the number three setting. Put it back to the home position. Next thing we're going to go over are our HVAC controls or our heating and defroster. Now what you want to do is you want to put this knob, again, your tractor may vary of how it operates, but generally you want to put the heat all the way up, turn your defroster on, and we're going to turn it to level one. Level one, heat and defroster, put your hand over where you would generally feel your heat is working. Put it up to level through level two. Heat and defroster felt. Put it up to level three. Heat and defroster felt. And level four, my heat and my defroster is felt. Now that it's at the highest level, you want to go through your different options. So this one over here would be your windshield and your feet. So you want to take both your hands, heat and defroster felt at my windshield and my feet. Next one is going to be your feet, heat felt at my feet. Next one is going to be your feet and your face, heat felt at my feet and my face. And the very last one is going to be just your face. Confirm that that's working correctly. Put it back in the defroster mode and you can turn this down. The very next thing that you want to do is inspect your seat. Have a look at your seat. My seat has no cracks, no damages, no tears, and no cuts. My seat is fastened to the tractor floor with the help of fasteners. None of those are loose or missing. My seat, grab a hold of your lever. My seat moves up and down, back and forth properly and remains. Now shake your seat and it remains in the lock position. The next thing that you want to go over is your seat belt. Grab your seat belt, grab a hold of the buckle, shake the, shake the buckle holder. My seat belt buckle holder, no cracks, no damages. The, fast, the fastener is tight and secure. You're going to pull your seat, all, seat belt all the way out and inspect your seat belt. My seat belt has no cuts or tears or any damages. My seat belt buckle, no cuts, no tears, no damages. Fasten your seat belt and give it a quick tug. My seatbelt locks properly and my seatbelt unlocks properly. Put it back in its original position. My seatbelt buckle, no cracks, no damages. My seatbelt buckle is fastened to the seat with the help of a fastener. The fastener is tight and secure, not loose, not missing. Next you're gonna go over is the tether belt. The tether belt, no cracks, no damages. The tether belt itself is attached to the tractor floor and the seat with the help of fasteners. The fasteners are tight and secure. None of them are loose or missing. Now you wanna to go to the other side. You may wanna open your door and inspect the other side, but from this side, you've got your tether belt, which is at the bottom here. Again, my tether belt is fastened to the seat and the floor confirm that the tether belt has no cuts or tears or any damages and confirm that the fasteners are tight and secure and they're not loose or missing. The next thing that you want to go over is explain your safety features or your safety devices in your tractor 
on the left is my fire extinguisher. It's in the green zone and ready to use. My fire extinguisher is fastened together with a clamp that is tight and secure and give it a quick tug. Behind me are my safety triangles. No cracks, no damages. My safety triangles, I have a total of three of them. And then we're going to inspect our first aid kit. My first aid kit, no cracks, no damages. It's not expired and it is safe to use. And that pretty much goes over our in-cab inspection. Now, once you've completed all of these tests or all of these pre-trip inspections, you're going to turn over to the, the examiner and let him know that you've completed your in-cab uh, test. He's going to ask you a bunch of questions, whether it be off the schedule one or off of his, uh, his tablet, and you're going to have to answer them to the best of your ability. Now, in Ontario, you're allowed to use a schedule one. I don't know what it is with other provinces or other states, but you can use the schedule one and he's going to ask you a bunch of questions that pertain to the schedule one. So in Ontario, what you're going to be doing is you're going to pull out your schedule one and you're going to read off the specific thing that he's asked you for. So in our case, we're going to read off our emergency equipment and safety devices. This one is uh, emergency equipment is missing, damaged or defective. This is a minor defect. What we would do is write it in our logbook, inform our operator, and our vehicle is safe to operate. There's some things and some um, defects that have a major and a minor. If it has a major defect, you would be reading it off of the Schedule 1. So what that goes over is you would write it in your logbook, inform your operator, and you would be pulling your, your uh, vehicle out of service or your vehicle is inoperable.